Welcome to Inform TV. I'm Alan Repke, Alexandria, Minnesota. Today we have the pleasure of uh, Bruce Campbell, candidate for House District 8B uh, here in the Alexandria Lakes area this uh, 31st day of July 2012. Uh, candidate Bruce Campbell is here to speak to you, the voters, and not just the voters in his district, but his views. Uh, uh, on the election process and what we need in government for the audience of Inform TV all over the state of Minnesota. Because I think Bruce has a lot to offer to you and uh, uh, that's why I gave him this opportunity as well as his opponent who decided not to uh, come to Inform TV. And what I'm getting at here today is uh, the primary is the grassroots of democracy. It allows the voting public to trump the party establishment. And uh, uh, so with that, uh, we're going to uh, uh, let Bruce do his thing. Now, uh, I could click to, uh, we were gonna click on his uh, uh, district map and show you that, but unfortunately, uh, when we do that, uh, if I can get it to happen here. When we went to the Secretary of State's office, uh, the maps of the 2000 Congressional Legislative Districts, uh, when they're compiled, they'll be available. People, we're only two weeks away from the primary, and we can't go to the Secretary of State's office and show you uh, uh, Bruce's district. But anyway, we're going to go back, and we're here today to hear Bruce's view of what he's going to do for the people in the 8th District, uh, House District 8B of Minnesota, and how he's going to be a leader for the district as well as the people of Minnesota. Bruce, it's all yours. Good morning, Al, and thank you, Inform TV, for giving me the opportunity to speak to the voters. I think it's extremely important that the voters get to know the candidates and a little bit about them, so I'm going to give you a little bit about me. My wife and I live on the north end of Lake Ida in Leaf Valley Township. And we have been here since about, I think we purchased our property about 1983. And so we built our home and we've been here ever since. I'm a retired electrician out of the metro area and I've done all electrical work from maintenance to working on nuclear powerhouses. We need to create some of these jobs that I worked on. We don't have them, we don't have them in this district and I would work with the county and the city leaders in the district to get some industry into this area. Without it, we don't have a chance to have living wage jobs. I currently am proud of what I'm doing, and that's a school bus driver for School District 206, Alexandria, Minnesota. I've learned how important the kids are in the district. I've got to know them. I have about, as I like to say, about 60 other grandkids on the bus outside of my six that I have in Lake Elmo and Woodbury and my son and daughter live. That's important. You want to learn, once you're with these kids, you get to learn how important education to them really is. I think we have a very good school district. We have good teachers. I'm not happy when I read the Echo newspaper and see that 19 of them were laid off, although some will be hired back if monies are available. That would be one of the priorities I'd have to work on is saying, look, we used to campaign. The campaign, I remember when politicians, which I've been in all my life, they used to say the most valuable resource we have is the children in this country. We have seem to have lost that focus. I don't like that, and I intend to work on to get it back if you elect me. We need our jobs. I worked in many parts of this country when jobs weren't available in St. Paul. I was in the St. Paul Union, and our jurisdiction didn't have any work, we had to go where there was other parts of the country to work. It's important to have jobs to come home to. Without them, we don't have a chance. I remember when I left town the first time because my unemployment check was not as high as my electric bill. And I did read, by the way, that the uh, gas consumption for natural gas is by powerhouses is rising because of the air conditioning use. We need to go back and reevaluate the energy in Minnesota. I believe that we need to pass some laws that says, look, 
you need to you need to insulate your house. Your construction workers need to say, we need to foam a house. I've talked to a lot of these businesses that use foam insulation, and to make the house more airtight. If you don't, you can go to a receptacle on your house or a switch and feel the cold air coming in. We need to stop that loss of energy. We can do it by foaming, and then we can put an air exchanger in the house. Many houses years ago used to have a big pipe, and they probably still do, that ran from the outside to the bottom of the furnace, so the furnace could get fresh air, moist air rather than dry air, and then they'd have to heat it. We need to get back to that. We need to start examining that. And we need to talk about taxes. Everybody talks about taxes. I met a, was at a town house meeting with Senator Bill Ingebrigtsen and Marion Eleanor Trumbull was the house seat a few years ago in Herbie's over at Carlos. And I asked Senator Bill Ingebrigtsen, I said, how much does state spending go up a year? He says, about 9%. I said, well, if you just compound that a little bit, you're going to realize that two things got to happen. Either you're going to raise taxes or you're going to cut spending. I think we need to cut spending. When I read in the Echo newspaper that the city of Alex put $10,000 to study, to study whether we need a new community center in Alex. We built a new high school, we have the Runestone, we have the theater here, we have plenty of places for a community center people can come and enjoy the community. And that to me was a waste of $10,000 could be used for something else. Oh, by the way, we are spending approximately $10,000 per year per student in District 206. We need to get that funding for them kids. We drive about 800 some thousand miles a year with them school buses. And we need to have the money for fuel, we need to have the money for new buses, and we need to have the money for repairs. And we need all that money that technology is moving us along. The Votech School over here is an extremely important to this community. It's an alternative to the college that has risen up the cost so high that many families can't afford it. So these vocational schools, which I also went to, my wife went to, are extremely important. I went there and I served two years in a day school program and four years in a night school program to be an electrician. And I also worked four years as an apprentice. We need all this stuff. It's an alternative for people who can't afford the money to go to college. As an example, I belong to a sportsman's club in Leaf Valley, and I'm not going to say who, but an individual from a school, two of them, came to our sportsman's club, and the kids were going on a trip, and they were looking for some fun, help and funding for to pay for the bus. And so we, uh, we took and gave them $1,500, and the question was asked, how many kids don't have any money? Well, about five or six, and then they find little ways to get them the money. And somebody else said, so one of them that was there says, do they have any spending money? No, they don't. And so there's a lot of things that kids need to have. They could have a little jingle in their pocket when they go to. And did you know that about 40% of the kids in this district do not have any money for hot lunches? They are, after they get to high school, they are served a whole different lunch doesn't cost them nothing, but it's a whole different game once that happens. And we need to change some of these things. Health care is, is extremely important. This community, at least, and I'm speaking a lot about Alex because that's what I know the best, but I read about the other co parts of the county, this district, in the Echo because if you read and you see where the hospital births, how many children are born to each community, and it gives that report every week. And when you took at the numbers, you could tell how far this township and how far this county and how far this city and any city is going to grow. There's approximately 660 births in Alexandria's Hospital. And that spreads from Kensington to Osakas to Morris to Alexandria to Miltona to Garfield, all of communities. And so you can pretty well chart the growth. The children that are born today are going to be in this school district for 18 years, given five years to get into it, and kindergarten, and then 12 more years before they graduate. We need to do industry. We need to keep the industry here. 
We need to keep the kids here once they graduate. The vocational school, by the way, is one of the most important parts in industry there is. Yes, we could have uh, all the big shots sitting up in the offices, but I'll tell you what, the nuts and bolts people that go to work every day, every day, eight hours a day, get up at 4.30 in the morning. And by the way, when I get up to get my school bus or I wake up because they drive by my house, people are going to work at 3.30 in the morning when they go by my house. We need to get that. And we need to, the employers to be able to pay the people. They need to pay them a living wage to keep them in this community. I think that people that have a lot of money should pay a little more taxes, to be honest with you. I know there's some houses when you go by the Carlo State Park, there's a huge house there. They've been working on it for about two years. I think the owner of that house could pay a little more taxes to help out the people who don't have the money to pay taxes because our taxes are raising. My taxes went up, or I should say are, 15 percent. That's a lot, 800 some dollars. I'm on fixed income. Many of you are on fixed income. Many of you are on no income. And the, one of the opponents is saying, you know, people on welfare is like feeding the animals and thinks that's a joke. That ain't a joke. When I campaigned, by the way, I ran against Tory Westrom a couple of years ago, I found some interesting things. I found an 80-year-old lady who didn't have any money for her heat bill. She said, I don't know what I'm going to do this winter. It was over in Ashby. In, or uh, Ashby, I think it was. And I found another fellow who says, I can only fill my gas tank in my car once a month because I need to pay the rent and food and other things. And I found a young girl sitting in the lobby of Wells Fargo that said, was crying with a little baby and said, I don't have any money, we need to put some money in a checkbook. And her husband said, I don't have any money. That's the kind of things that are out there. That's the kind of things we need to cure. That's the kind of things we need to send a message back to the person who said it's like feeding animals. That to me is pretty disgusting. And we spend a lot of time on social issues. I propose myself, I'm not, I'm in favor of the voter voter ID. I don't see what's wrong with it. When I voted for the first time in Leaf Valley, my wife and I went up to the town hall and we had to produce our driver's license and to, to be able to vote. Yesterday, I went to a couple of local businesses and I used a check card and I had to show them who I was. What's wrong with something like that? I don't think that should be a problem. But some people want to make it a problem. And it takes up a lot of time, it takes up a lot of energy, and it takes a lot of money for all this kind of stuff that could be better used to help the people in Minnesota. We don't want to become another Washington. And I'm afraid of that. The reason I'm in this primary is because I've been a DFLer since I was, we lived on a small farm over by Cushing, Minnesota with my grandparents. My mother was divorced and it wasn't daycare some days. And so we, my sister and I lived with our grandparents on this farm. By the way, no electricity, no tractors. And yes, we did walk a mile of school. It was uphill and then it was downhill when we came down. But what we learned from that is hard work and we need to get back to some of that and we need to provide the resources I didn't have any health care when I was on that farm when I come back to the city I lost a lot of my teeth because there was no dental care we can't let our kids go like that that is irresponsible in my opinion and so health care has to be on the agenda and we need to quit spending money on frivolous things and use it for the benefit of the people in the community and for the kids who are our future in this country. I remember the days when, uh, some of you will too, uh, uh, the hippies, if you remember the hippies, they used to wander up and down 94 playing guitars and laying in the ditches and, and somebody said, them people are, are, don't laugh at them because they're gonna be uh, running this country before we know it. Guess what, they're running it. And so folks, give me a chance to be a representative. I will be for the people, by the people. Thank you, Al, and thank Inform TV. Thank you much, Bruce. That was uh, 
an excellent view of the type of people we have in the neighborhood out here in outstate Minnesota. And here at Inform TV, that's our goal, to see that you, the people, are informed about the resources you have in your community. But it's up to you to decide how you're going to use that resource in this upcoming election. And will, will the people trump the uh, establishment and see that democracy reigns in good old state of Minnesota? Bruce, we want to thank you for being yep. on Inform TV. You bet. And thank thanks you, for being a guest. I think you did yep. a great job. Thank you. I'll be back with some comments in a moment. Well, welcome back to the analysis portion uh, and commentary portion of the program that I'm presenting to you, the voters of outstate Minnesota, and especially the voters in the 8th uh, uh, Senate District, uh, House District 8B. But it's a statewide basis that I'm bringing this to you to see what really goes on in the political process and the importance of the primary. And I'm asking you the question, uh, uh, will the people speak on August 14th and vote for Bruce Campbell, the outsider that the Douglas County Democratic Party are not at all happy he's running the people in St. Paul, the, the Democrats in the 7th Congressional District. But I want to convey to you what Bruce himself had to say. As you noticed, I stayed out of it. I kept my mouth shut. I wanted you to see the substance of this candidate. Yet at the same time, I want you to understand that Bruce is not in the room in any manner, shape, or form when I'm doing this. In fact, he's long gone and he didn't ask me to say anything. Uh, and we talked, I said, Bruce, you wanna talk for a full half an hour? You can do it, but I suggest you probably do it a little less and I'll do some commentary on it. He said, yeah, that's fine, 15, 20 minutes, whatever you think. But in the process, Bruce sat in the chair over there and talked about what he saw and what he's experienced in his lifetime and some of the issues relating to what's going on in Douglas County, in outstate Minnesota, relating to uh, uh, education and all the big button issues of this fall campaign. And I was incredibly impressed. And the, the reality is, I think all conservative Democrats or hardcore moderates like myself, or Tea Party people, or Republicans, and plain independents and independence party people would have been incredibly impressed how Bruce talked about the issues. And I finally had to throttle him back from a standpoint, let's save it, let's get it on tape. And the other reason I'm bringing this to my statewide audience is the fact is we're all disgusted what these despicable Republican Party and Democratic Party have devolved to the economics we face the issues we face both in the state of Minnesota and the national and world front. These two political parties, people, their incompetence is just mind boggling. And there's no source that you can point a finger at more than these party establishments. And, and the point of bringing, giving Bruce an opportunity here to talk is, do Minnesotans wanna speak do Minnesotans want to be involved in their choice this fall in the general election, or do they want these two establishments that have failed them miserably to control their choice? And I can't help but think of back to our governor choice uh, of the two governor candidates that we were offered. Two people that have had issues with alcoholism. Yet that was all our only choice. And doesn't mean that I'm not open to working, talking, welcoming uh, uh, Governor Dayton, but I, I think back on the whole process of where have we devolved to? When are we the people going to start looking for some candidates 
demanding that you have press source such as Inform TV that looks into options for you. And that's what I'm doing here today. Now before I forget, uh, I gave this conservative Democrat a super deal. But with my limited funds here, I'm going to be down at the Pope County Fair. Mark Anthony's going to be down there. I'm going to have a chunk of the Keystone Pipe line down there. We're going to bring our camera down there. A few of you people want to uh, give your uh, a view on what's going on and talk to some of the um, vendors down there and uh, I try to post it uh, uh, um, on our Garfield Tower, of course, and some of our other outlets. But uh, uh, I gave this conservative candidate an incredible buy to be on TV for a lousy $100 bill and it encouraged him to do it. Yet at the same time, people, I did not neglect his opponent. And in and, and fact, the establishment uh, opponent that the Democratic Party uh, in Douglas County and this region of the state wanted to run. In fact, to, to prove it to you, uh, I uh, called Bob, and first of all, I'll back up a little bit, and I was walking the neighborhoods the other day like I did to try to get a little exercise and keep my belly down a little bit anyway, and all of a sudden I saw two men by a, a, a house door and I hollered at them, I said, what you guys up to? And walked over to them and started talking a little bit. And Bruce's challenger, Bob, said, well, how did you find me? And I said, as a press person, it's my job to know what's going on in the neighborhood. Uh, I'm an observationist, always have been, always will be. That's how you've got the footage on Festus the Goose, on the swans and the tower going up here in Alexandria. I'm always looking for things that affect our lives. And I want to give you a view of the legacy fund like way I, I did through the eye, my eyes in the camera. And so that you can see what's going on in your government. Now, with this whole situation, I sent uh, uh, Bob, Bruce's challenger. Bruce is going to be on Inform TV. I'm going, uh, and I sent him this email. Bruce is going to be on Inform TV for a cost of $100. Unbelievable. You can get on TV for $100 and run and run and run a number of times. Are you interested as well? I asked him and I left a phone message for him as well. And he came back as the establishment candidate that I firmly believe is taking direction from the Douglas County the Democrats, the 7th District Democrats, the St. Paul Democrats. And he said, I'm going to say no at this time, but maybe down the road. In other words, after he wins the primary. Yet the interesting thing, when I talked to him on the street, um, I found him to be an interesting guy and he told me he wasn't quite sure uh, how all his positions. I said, say that, come on Inform TV, spend uh, some of that campaign bucks that you have. I see you're putting all these lawn signs up and actually talk to the people in the district. Actually talk to the people around the state to see if we're going to finally get some leaders to, to pick from rather than all these politicians. And he said, well, I, 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 you should just offer it to me uh, for free and, and find sponsors. And I said, well, that's a lot easier said than done. But anyway, I thought to be fair to him, and that's before I ever in, even knew who Bruce Campbell was, um, I decided, well, you know, I know a bunch of the Democrat party here in the uh, uh, Alexandria Lakes area meet at a certain bar every night to hear a little blues and jazz, and I go there from time to time as well. And so I took our coverage map, I, I, uh, our, our main area that KSX used to have, but you people in South and, and uh, 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 Rochester, Albert Lee, Austin, R Red Wing, Oatana, Faribault, uh, 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 Mankato, uh, Lakeville, Duluth, tried to show them, hey, you guys should spend a little of your money in this whole process to introduce this new candidate 
in the primary process. And here's our, our map of 40 mile radius around Alexandria Lakes area through selective TV. And here's our map uh, on the RVIG group that covers the city of uh, Detroit Lakes and Park Rapids, uh, that a portion that Charter doesn't cover, all the way down to Kimball. And I was pushed the maps were pushed back in my face. This guy has no right to run. We're in charge. We don't even know where he's coming from. Blah, 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 blah. And I said, you should spend. We're not spending any money with you. In other words, nobody in the state of Minnesota, nobody in the Alexandria Lakes here, nobody in Douglas County even listens to you. Sure, we flicked on. We saw you were there and we flicked off. That's basically what they told me. And they have that full right. But I went there with telling him, I'll give you a heck of a deal. We want to get candidates come in, but they're not going to come in for a hundred bucks. Uh, I can't pay Mark Anthony's salary or survive myself and give you true informed look of your community and what's going on. But at any rate, it was pushed back in my face. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll do it on my own. I'll go back to this endorsed candidate that the party loves and I'll check out his challenger that they tell me has no right to run. And I started talking with him. He said, the people uh, are going to have to, 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 to just do what they want to do because I don't have any money, he said, to, to, to uh, uh, put my point of view on. People know me. And I said, sir, I'm on TV and nobody knows me in this town, or at least they act like they don't know me. And, uh, uh, but some good people do, of course, and more all the time. And and I said, you got to have a little money. You're running for political office. What do you do it? I said, 200 bucks is a heck of a buy. He said, well, I don't know. And, and uh, I said, I tell you what, I'll give you a deal for 100 bucks. And this conservative comes back and say, I'll do it for 100 bucks. I tell you what, I'll do it for 100 bucks. But I'm going to have to offer your opposition uh, a, a chance for 100 bucks as well. He said, fine and dandy, I'll, I'll be in to do the deal. And once again, remember, he has nothing to, uh, uh, no input whatsoever, even know I'm doing this commentary other than I told him. And I went to his candidate again and offered him this super deal and he turned it down. But what I'm trying to get at people here today is the fact that the primary system is the ultimate portion of democracy that you have the right to do. And I'm encouraging you, whether Republican, independent, know somebody in this area, get them out and vote. Let's put the finger in the face of the Democratic Party establishment, the Tea Party establishment, the Republican establishment, the Independence Party establishment, and let's see that we have two conservatives on the ballot because I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. We've got to come to the middle. We have to have people that are tough enough to make the decisions. And I truly believe Bruce is going to do that. I'm going to vote in the Democratic Party uh, primary. At least I think it's still legal to do that. Or there's a lot of people out, out there that have uh, no party affiliation. And you sure as heck should get out there. And you people in, in Austin or Albert Lee and Duluth should make uh, that no people in the Alexandria Lakes area call them up and I'll, I'll buy you a steak uh, at Fat Daddy's or the Corral or or uh, uh, the Depot or Eddie's uh, Interlochen or uh, Bugaboo Bay uh, or Rappers. Let's get something going. Let's challenge the establishment. That's what I'm bringing you up there for. And I'm trying to say, shouldn't we base our decisions on people coming before the camera like Bruce uh, bravely did? and put his name on the ballot and let him talk to you? Are you the people of Alexandria Lakes and you the people across Minnesota, are you going to vote on the bright red lawn signs? Are you going to vote for the, uh, the person that sends you the most email, that has the most powerful phone bank for, for two seconds? Can you vote for our candidate? Are you going to listen to Inform TV and make your own decision? and stand up for the despicable government that we all have allowed to happen. That's my point today. Give Bruce a chance. I think he deserves it. He's going to get my vote. And what I want you to do is get involved. 
you no longer can sit back and one way to get involved is see that Inform TV, Mark Anthony is on there, news, weather, and sports, and we'll also bring some other interesting programs. Get down to the Pope County Fair where the county commissioners aren't even challenged. And here in, in Douglas County, we've got a ton of them running and we want those people to come on and talk to you as well. Challenge them to do it. Thanks for listening to Inform TV. I'm Alan Repke.